Well, Celtic have a new manager, hip hip hooray, Ange Postecoglou. And it gives me enormous pleasure uh, to, to welcome Ange. My goal is to have this club playing football that's going to excite every one of you and we're going to be successful. Kyogo's amazing. I mean, he's unbelievable. He's our best striker. He's our best defender. He was all over the pitch. No, it was a huge shock. I absolutely did not see that coming. There's always two sides to these stories, isn't there, guys? We've won the Premier Sports Cup final by two goals to one. I'm surprised you never opened with Konnichiwa Hamish. That absolute euphoria of that goal going in. It's inc it was incredible. I don't even know where to start with that, but the facts that I'm sure you're well aware of are that Celtic have just beaten Rangers by three goals to nil. So I'm just looking at this, the upcoming schedule. I know we've got to play the top six teams. But this is a worst to lose now, surely. I look smug right now. Hopefully I look really smug right now. Champions, Champions again. Champions again. Champions again. Lele. If anything could sum up the topsy turvy nature of yesterday, it's probably the changing emotions and mood of Stevie of this channel. You saw him in the reaction shortly after the drop points at Hibs yesterday. It's fair to say he wasn't in a great place. He was struggling, he was pretty dejected. But this was Stevie a few hours after that when news filtered through of Rangers' draw with Motherwell at Ibrox. As the legendary commentator Barry Davis once said, just look at his face. I think we enjoyed ourselves yesterday. Am, am I safe in saying that? It was, as I say, a really topsy-turvy day. It kind of summed up the whole title race so far. We had a really disappointing result and performance in the early game at Easter Road, we were just expecting Rangers to get the three points and narrow the gap at the top to a single point, even more so when they went into a 2-0 lead in the first half. But their loss is our gain, I suppose, and the fact they couldn't take maximum points against Motherwell is great news for us. You know that bit of the start of every Celtic versus Rangers match where the Sky Sports commentator Ian Crocker goes on the spiel about, oh, you know, this, this match started as a friendly, but there's not been very much friendly about it since then. Well, it seems like that statement might need a until now at the end of it, because if reports are to be believed... That is exactly what is going to happen later this year. Celtic are going to take on Rangers in a friendly, in Australia, no less. And this hasn't gone down too well today, it's fair to say. I mean, I would get a better reaction right now if I stripped off and started singing Simply the Best while wearing a Peter Law face mask. We're moving on now to more immediate matters. We've done a lot of looking forward on today's video. Let's kind of look a little bit or a lot more short term now and ahead to the game against the Buddies. Hello everyone, welcome back to 67 Hail Hail on YouTube where we're discussing Celtic 2, St Mirren nil. thanks to goals from Cameron Carter-Vickers and Callum McGregor. I'm hosting tonight because Hamish has been running around Celtic Park like a madman. He's been in the, in the crowd tonight. Then he was in the press conference with Ange Postacoglu. And the player, who was the player, Hamish? Who were you speaking to? Uh, the skipper. Nice one. Oh, good. How are you doing? How are yeah, you I'm feeling? good. They're an impatient bunch, this lot, aren't they? Um, I, I come back, <laughs> running about, getting content for you lot for tomorrow, and we get comments, Matthew Wright, come on, Hamish, Ryan 118 will have his three things up. Have a bit of patience, lads. We're here now. Um, yeah, all good, John. Three points in the bag. Everyone in, in fine form. And in really good form tonight, actually. McGregor. Mm. Um, McGregor, I always think, you know, speaks really well. And he's, you know, a, a typical captain that you would want. So, um, and, and obviously a, a game to chat about as well, mate. So, um, plenty to get into. So, I heard Mr. Postacoglu's um, BBC Radio Scotland interview with Kenny McIntyre after the game. And he was in fine form in that one. I don't know if that, that gave him a bit of a, a boost heading into the press conference. You think he needs a boost? <laughs> what 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 was this pattern? What what was he what was he saying? And what was your question to him? Just just generally happy. I think he described it as a a good um, performance. Uh, difficult circumstances with um, you know the way St Mirren came. You know ten eleven men behind the ball basically 
from the first minute until we took the lead. Um, he was actually asked by a, a journalist, you know, whether that frustrates him, and he gave his typical diplomatic answer. But I get the impression it, it does a little bit, and I know he had some comments to make about Hibs at the weekend. I think I can't remember exact quotes, but I think tonight he said something along the lines of. You know, the, the games aren't quite as good when the opposition come and play like that, which is kind of as far as you're going to hear Ange going. It's an opportunity for this football club to, to continue to grow, you know, um, spread the love. And we all go back to years afterwards then. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they've all invited me over to theirs while I've been here, everyone I've bumped into, so I probably should open up, but um, yeah, we'll see. Um, look, that's a long way down the track, obviously. Um, we've got announced this week, we've got more important things to, to concentrate on, but. Uh, like I said, from my perspective, um, hopefully, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm still in charge and we uh, and take this team uh, to my hometown. I'll be a very proud person. And we think uh, Ange will certainly be in charge in November when, when Celtic go over to Sydney. Uh, Scott, let's let's move on to this issue that has divided many then. Mm. Um, what's the Aussie perspective on Celtic going to Sydney because fans here aren't too happy. There was a display in the North Curve last night that read, we're not half of anything unless there's money to be made. Shove your old firm friendly up your arse. But what's the kind of view from a, a, an Aussie? Look, I, again, I, I think um, Ange as always speaks very poignantly and um, how he answered it last night was, was bang on the money in, in terms of my opinion, how I feel about it. Um, People have their opinions, which I respect fully as Celtic fans and and, and what they feel and, and, and what they go through and, and what they see over in Scotland. But for us guys in Australia, this has been massive news. Right, everyone, the Livingston Lions versus Celtic, a ground we've not won at since I was six years old. That's a joke, by the way. I think I was eight. It has been a horrible place for Celtic to play in recent years. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to 67 Hill Hill. I'm your host, John. Joined by Stevie today, there is no Hamish Carton. Um, he's had a well-deserved day off today. He actually chose to spend his day off following Celtic, going to the Tony Macaroni Arena. Proved to be something of a good luck charm as Celtic finally went away. They are, what, well, for the first time in years, Stevie. Goals from Dyson Media, James Forrest in an own goal. How are you feeling after that? Good, but far better than last Sunday, of course. I think everybody <laughs> in the channel was uh, about to send in some um, contributions for my well-being after the Hibs game and I was dreading this one all week John I think just because of the record we've had against Livingston it's been well documented of course by everyone in the Scottish media but of course Celtic fans and I even get dragged into it, it became a bit of a sideshow didn't it but no um, I think after that um, and generally after that performance I feel good and it's not a repeat of last Sunday and I think you and everyone else will be happy to see me no smiling but content at least like, fair play to Livingston, they deserve the results against us over the years, but I just found that very satisfying, Stevie, like, to, to beat a team that, you know, we do have a bit of a thing against, certainly a media thing, and the supporters, you know, have bought into all as well. You know, it's been hard not to, you know, our performances at Livingston just haven't been good enough over the last few years. Um, so to see us go there and comfortably win was, was very, very satisfying indeed. What are you thinking going forward now? Like, we've got eight games left got 24 points to play for I, I'm not trying to get too ahead of myself and I'm not you know, making any definitive predictions but I just feel like we're in a really really strong, I think we're in a stronger position than perhaps people realise we've also not we've not got the fact that we're, we're not going to be playing two games a week going forward, I think that's another factor, mm -hmm. I think we've got I think five of our last games are at home something like that, I don't think it's four and four so I'm just looking at this the upcoming schedule. I know we've got to play the top six teams. But this is ours to lose now, surely. Well, yeah, because, I mean, again, head by three points now as well. But I think it is a one game at a time thing. And I'm all going to, for myself personally here as a fan, I think last Sunday I had to take a right good look at myself and possibly overreacted. But I was annoyed, just like everyone, because I know that we can play better, John, and I know that's not the Celtic that we've been seeing this season. That's all it was. It wasn't just because we didn't win. It wasn't a case of throwing the, throwing the toys out the pram or that. It was the nature of the performance we put in, but I understand we're not going to be getting a brilliant performance every week, and we do have to do what we can just to get over the line, but John, what I really liked today was I expected today to be similar to last week, but it was a case of do whatever we can, eh, we can as long as we just get the three points. 
We put in a really good performance today. The tempo, the hunger, the intensity was there. We controlled that game. And the team that started were excellent to the point where we weren't crying out for subs. We didn't look tired. We didn't look fatigued after like 60 minutes or so. The team were well in the game and well in top. And they were, you know, just, I know Livingston got a goal out of nothing. That was the only annoyance. But other than that, John, we were excellent today. And we did get the three points that we've always been crying out for saying that we needed. So... I think that was the most pleasing aspect of it for me. Now, I understand that next up is Tannadice, I believe that's right, in the cup, mm-hmm. isn't it? Now, Tannadice in the cup, and then in Rose County. Rose County. Mm-hmm. Okay, so as I said, one game at a time, so like, I'll focus on the Tannadice one. But now, uh, it's a case of not just... It would be nice, right, if we could get a performance like that and a result to go in the next round. But I'll probably try and screw it up a wee bit now when it comes to a Celtic team and just accept that I have to now trust the manager a wee bit more. Another player I want to pick out just from yesterday that probably has gone under the radar a little bit is Anthony Ralston. I thought he was excellent yesterday. And as good as Josip Juranovic is, I think Ange's call to put Ralston in at right back and Greg Taylor in at left back was vindicated yesterday because I thought Ralston was brilliant. How are you feeling generally about this game? For, for me, I mean, I've spoken about it a bit in the channel. It almost feels like a little bit of a, a kind of reprieve from the, the, the real tense action in the league. It's still going to be a nerve-wracking encounter, though every game is now with Celtic. But yeah, I mean, it's good not to focus on being three points ahead, being three points ahead even, or what will happen with the goal difference. It's just going to be an old-fashioned cup battle again, yeah. and that's what I love. It's going to be a good game. I think Dundee United will be up for it. More importantly, I think we'll be up for it. Players and the manager seem really focused going by the press conference the other day with Ange and Joe Hart, and I just think the fans are up for it too. It's a chance to get into the semis, get to Hamden again, mm. and win another trophy. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us on 67 Hail Hail for the reaction after Dundee United nil, Celtic 3 were through to the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup where we will face Rangers in mid-April for the chance to play one of the Edinburgh sides in the finals. So what does Celtic's April look like? Well, we don't know the post-split fixtures yet, but this is what we're staring at in terms of the next month and a half. Celtic only have one more game in March on Saturday at home to Ross County. After that, we'll get a two-week break before taking on Rangers at Ibrox on April the 3rd. Six days after that, St. Johnson visits Celtic Park for the final match before the split. We'll then face Rangers at Hamden, probably on the 17th of April, as I say. Then we're booked in for the first two rounds of the split in the following two weekends, with a very high chance that one of those matches will be against Rangers. OK, Celtic versus Ross County tomorrow. Another opportunity to get a win, three points, and move one little step closer to some glory. 4-0 it finished. It could have been 14-0. Exactly. Brilliant performances around the pitch. Um, I've just spoken to Ange Postacoglu, so that's why I'm positively beaming. <laughs> and obviously because I get to spend the next 20 minutes or so with you. And so oh. just give us your, your thoughts on today, mate. We've got Celtic Park behind us. Hopefully you can see it. The sun is setting. Um, it's just been a lovely day, both you know on the pitch and, and off it as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, mate, I'm in an extremely good mood. Um, yeah, for a just, change. For a change. Uh, just utter domination start to finish. Uh, I don't I, I don't think Ross County were ever in that game. Um and it's one of those where, you know, we've had these games before against like Hearts and Livingston where teams come and oh they're they're in good form, all this, all that. We just absolutely batter them start to finish. Uh, just a really, really satisfying win. Just something I'm thinking of before we get into the game. Do you think Celtic play as well as that if we we have a midweek European game prior to it? Because <laughs> I know I'm kind of um, I'm kind of having a wee a wee go here, but I, I, I on, in all seriousness, I think as much as we'd like to be in the Europa League, I think this is exactly why some people were kind of thinking, you know, focusing on the league, having a whole week to to focus on a league game is is a good thing because Celtic came out tonight. We looked fresh. You know, we looked lively. We looked really, really motivated today. True. And you actually said it, you know, after the, the after the game, and I'll, I'll get onto some of his comments afterwards. But he said that, you know, he had a good feeling about today. He just felt that everyone was going to be up for it, and the, the team certainly showed that right from the start. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the environment, you know, plays a lot into a sunny day in Glasgow. Is always, you know, three PM kick up. It's it's rare for one thing, yeah. But also, you know, it's uh, it just has something about it today. Just like. Every kind of second in the build-up to that match, I was just getting more... The anticipation was building and building. Mm-hmm. The fans seemed in a fantastic mood, even from the morning um, coming in. And it's just, yeah, it was great. In terms of midweek European, um, I don't know. I know you've been a wee bit cheeky, but I think the best frame of reference is probably the Seville year. We actually finished that season with six games on the trot. Mm. Um, and the squad we have now, 
obviously it's hypothetical, but um, I think we showed and showed in the substitutions that the squad we have to deal with any sorts of challenges. I mean, we practically played different midfields, different flanks at times. So, mm. I, no, I think we would have been absolutely fine. It was properly warm today. Yeah. I mean, we're at mid-March, and I, I, I'm no... Um, who, who was that? The weather guy? Fish? Michael, Michael Fish. Fish. I'm no Michael Fish, but... <laughs> I think it was about as warm as that Michelin game in the summer. I mean, yeah. in that standing section today with the sun right on you, it was properly roasting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everyone had their, their tops off today. I was going to ask if you went tap half, yeah. <laughs> apart from me, um, and nobody wants to see that at all. And Hi, everyone. We're just beginning a brand new international break. Can I get a collective groan, please? Thank you. However, the good news... I think I've just seen Dyes and Maida running down my street. Today we're chatting to Andy Harper, a former footballer in Australia's National Soccer League. He's now a journalist, a writer, a biographer. He's also a good mate of Ange Postacoglu. I'm also a mate of Ange, Andy, mainly because he called me mate once. Once. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you've been called mate a few times, have you? Uh, in some of his nicer moments, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how elite a manager do you think Celtic have right now? Top of the tree. I said a few years ago in these sorts of discussions with people across world sport, not just football, but any sport, when you're talking about the art of coaching, Ange Postacoglu is in the top couple of percent. No question in my mind. The art of coaching. Forget the technical issues with different sports, but he could sit down in a room with the very best in any of the world's big sports, not just football, and be at home. He could be at home again because, you know, and and people confuse this. He talks about, that's the way I like my football to be played. Well, okay, he's an athlete. He does like the aesthetics of football. But i tell you what he likes more than that is winning. Hi, everyone. I know it's a bit of a different video today. I'm at Celtic Park. Somehow, for some reason, I've been let into Celtic Park because Celtic have put on a a very special media day today to look ahead to the Celtic women's match up against Hibernian that's here at Celtic Park on Saturday. Now, today I'll be speaking to their player, Caitlin Hayes, as well as the first team player, Anthony Ralston. The first team have been getting plaudits for the style of football they're playing under Ange this season, but you guys play quite a similar style, don't you, kind of attractive football? Yeah, we just copy, we just, like I said, we all buy in as individual players and then as a team collectively to just buy into Fran's philosophy and Fran's ethos and just continue to work hard and work on that. And then ultimately, as long as we keep the mindset of belief, then we, we end up setting ourselves up pretty well. Just looking forward to Ibrooks now, a big game. Yeah, no, it is. Um, but, you know, as, as I said previous, we're, as a team, we're very calm and we're, we know we need to take each game as it comes. Um, you know, we're aware it's a, it's a big game, but as they all are, because obviously we want to, um, you know, really kick on to the end of the season and, and, and get where we want to be. Right, so we're at the start of a big week ahead of the Rangers game on Sunday. You've experienced this as a player, as an assistant manager. What is training like in weeks like this? Do, do you notice it going up a level? Uh, n- definitely, you know, uh, the intensity, yes. But I think it's important, you know, it's not, you're not going to change anything because they already have the winning formula. Otherwise, Celtic wouldn't be sitting first in top of the league. Uh, so, so the winning formula is there. I think it's more important for the manager and the coaching staff to just uh, try to make sure the players don't think too much about this this massive game. Yes, it's a very important ga- game, but don't change the way you play, the team right. plays. How are you two mm. feeling, Scott? First of all, how, how are you feeling? Fine. The nerves don't kick in till the day of the game. That's when it all kicks off. Everything else is relaxed till that point. I struggle in the night before as well, I must say, David. I'm the same. Well, I'm, I'm actually maybe, when I start thinking about it a couple of days before, that's when I start to build up a wee bit of tension. I think more so for this one. Sort of mm. heightened stakes, I think, compared to your average Glasgow Derby match. So, I can't wait, Hamish. I'd love to know what the ones and you, Scott, well, the ones that are relaxed, what they're on in the build up to this, because I, I can never get that way, especially this close to the game, honestly. It's a nightmare. But there was a line that he said in that as well, which was, don't be derailed by the chaos. 
And I think that just sums up Ange perfectly. He's got such belief in this group of players, such belief in his coaching, such belief in, in how we go about things. And, mm-hmm. and Callum McGregor said it in an interview yesterday as, uh, as well, where they're just so firmly set on how we play. And I don't think the, the atmosphere, I don't think the occasion yeah, I agree. will get to them. And I think that's where I feel in the past maybe we'll play the occasion and, and under the likes of Lennon his, his team talk will be about that yeah aggression I, and yeah, all that yeah with, with Postacoglu I think it's just different I think he's got such a belief in, in the, the stuff that we work on in training and I just feel regardless of how the game might start tomorrow and I think it'll come out they'll come out fast uh, I just got a feeling that we'll be able to deal with any kind of things that go on in game as well and yeah. I just have a, have a confidence in this group <laughs> Do I look smug right now? Hopefully I look really smug right now because I absolutely feel smug right now after that. Celtic have beaten Rangers at Ibrooks. A massive, massive win for Ange Postacoglu's men today. We've got Stevie on with us. Um, I'm a bit out of breath as well. It's been a hell of an afternoon at Ibrooks. Um, a game that I'll remember for a long, long time. I hope you all will as well. I hope you can hear and see us loud and clear. Um, Stevie, we probably don't need you for this one, mate. Just you go and get a wee drink or something. I'll, I'll do this whole Stevie, video. I can speak for the next half an hour, guys and, and girls. Um, Stevie, the floor's yours, mate. I'm really, really proud. Uh, getting into that game, we, we were really nervous all week. We were excited as well. Yeah. But, I mean, honestly, after the start we had and how that team recovered, how they stood up to that crowd, how they stood up to the players, how they stood up to everything thrown at them, and they made me and you... Oh, look at you as well, smiling so much. It's got to the point, everyone, that I, I haven't done my notes. I've not done any of the notes. Notes, and notes j- just like form, notes go out the window yes, on a day like uh, this. Yeah, it was my pal, you know. <laughs> but no, the notes are away. Um, right now, just a Bam Pot fan like everyone else. And honestly, the the way that this like Angie's team had recovered in that game after that horrible start was incredible. I mean, you would, I would have taken that draw before the game. But to get the three points and not even that to be comfortable yeah. during that as well, and it, it's it's unbelievable. I'm really really proud of the manager on that team, honestly, and the fans that were there. The noise we we heard more of the fans in the second half than that. Fans Bob. were brilliant, unbelievable. I think you made a great point there with Brown as well. Brown would have got in their heads mentally, wound up Ryan Jack and everything. Yeah. It would all been blustered and bravado. But Callum McGregor on the pitch. It's, like took, it's kind of symptomatic of Celtic compared to previous years. Yeah, it's Ange well. just wants all the talking to be done. Football. Ange wants yeah. everything to be done in the pitch. That's what we saw today with McGregor. McGregor could have easily got in their faces and could have done what Brown did. But he's a totally different player. He took three of their players out and then fed Gigi. He had a shot, so I blocked Hatati. I think McGregor's... You it know, was Rogic with the first shot, actually. Aye, yeah. Rogic. And then, you know, McGregor's probably got to do better with Hattati's effort, I think. But, I mean, Rogic as well in that environment, on the half wall like yeah, that, it's a great to put it in the opposite side of McGregor. But the big, the, the, the timing was so huge for that, Hamish. We yeah. said it at the time. Their fans, their crowd was so buoyant. They were like they were, they were rampant after that goal. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as Rogic scored, hit them flat. And yeah. it was almost as if they were going, oh, wait, they're actually not terrified by us. Alright, how we doing? And we're going to start with a beautiful, beautiful sight. The Scottish Premiership League table, which looks pretty good to me. Celtic six points clear, six and a half points really with that goal difference. The most points Rangers can finish on now is 91. So Celtic need 13 more points to clinch the title. Right everyone, Friday's video and we are firmly looking ahead to another huge game for Celtic this weekend. We're at home to St. Johnson. Hi everyone, we are at Celtic Park after an incredible afternoon, Stevie. Um, we're going to win the league, we're going to win the league. You really must believe us, that's what was getting sung by Celtic fans today. Certainly not us two, we are we know far better than that. But um, I'm going to ask you right now, is that the performance today that convinces you even more so that Celtic are going to win the league? It does, I can't see past this team. I said last week and I'm going to stick to that one everyone. I just can't see past this. I mean, ultra focused, ultra professional. And it was just amazing that after we beat Rangers back in February, we went on to beat Motherwell and we were even better. I mean, beating them last Sunday and any hopes, any faint hopes whatsoever that that mob might have had, that we were going to drop points or we were going to be complacent, totally blown out of the water. Mm. They'll be demoralised. I'm thinking of high we're going to be on after that. I just can't see past this, Hamish. We're brilliant. It just felt today as if the team, you know, were, were trying things and maybe haven't 
been doing as much this season. I mean, we had like three or four nutmegs in the first half. McGregor had one, Hatati had one, I think Jota attempted one as well. It was clear the team were really confident today. And as I say, getting that early goal just you know, kicked everything on. It was a real catalyst for the performance. It was. I was really happy for Rio Hatati as well. He took, I'm not going to say criticism, but there were some questions about his fitness and about his recent performances. And it's not as if it's, it's not as if it's getting on his back for the sake of it, because he hasn't mm-hmm. hit the heights of what he had in, you know, um, January and February when he signed. But he was outstanding today. Yeah, it was good. And it was a really good finish as well. On that um, subject, you know, we've been waiting to see him for ages finally comes on to an incredible, incredible ovation. How did you think James McCarthy got on? <laughs> Very good. The comedian strikes I just, again, I doesn't I can't he? believe James McCarthy got that reaction. I mean, amazing. Great to see... Um, no. The, the Ant and Deck, indeed. <laughs> uh, Kyogo. I mean, great to see him back and should probably have had a goal. Should have had a um, goal, yes. I would have my doubts of whether Kyogo could start that game next Sunday. I just think Ange is going to take it Take it slowly with Kyogo. Get, I think he's going to learn his lessons from St. Johnson last time and, and uh, Real Betis as well. I also think, sorry Hamish, but bear in mind we are playing on a Sunday. The day before that is Saturday. And that well hum- done, mate. <laughs> Celtic's five final matches of the Premiership season. All of these games are on Sky Sports. Starting with the game on Sunday the 24th of April, a half-two kick-off. A trip to the Highlands against Ross County. We then follow that up with back-to-back home matches and their big ones as well. The biggest one against Rangers on the 1st of May, a noon kickoff there. And six days later, Saturday the 7th of May, again a noon kickoff for the visit of Hearts. If we are still going at this stage, as in still, you know, an actual title to win, we'll go to Tanadice on Wednesday the 11th of May, a 7.30 kickoff there. And we will finish the season, as we have done a few times, I think, with a home game against Motherwell on Saturday the 14th of May. We've got a real Celtic hero on the channel today. Man, he's got a good, a good, um, good demeanour. He's got a good way about him, nice and calm. Nothing looks to phase him, really. And, and I guess that's the way to handle Celtic because he's the size of the club. So he's a really nice guy and hopefully, hopefully he gets it. It's Derby weekend, Celtic versus Rangers here at Hamden Park. Hi everyone, right, we've had uh, plenty of uh, good games so far this season. Uh, this afternoon certainly wasn't one of them. Um, certainly a fair bit of deflation across us too. On top of that, Stevie's got a bit of a cough going on as well. So we'll do our best to, to soldier on for the next 15 minutes or so and chat about whatever that was at Hamden today uh, because it wasn't very good, Stevie. No, it wasn't. Neither was my chest infection during that as well, but... That was awful. We got exactly what we deserved, Hamish. We really did. Um, um, I think this team takes all the credit. They get all the adulation when things go well, and deservedly so. Mm-hmm. They deserve all the criticism that's coming away in the next few days. And I can only hope, just like against Hibs, when we were gutted after that, I hope they learn from it. And I hope they're hungry and motivated to take it out in the team that we face next to Ross County. Yeah. Um, it's so important now that we get a reaction for that. but. It's going to be a sore one to take. That was a real sore one to take today. How are you feeling today? How, how how's it going? Um, still still not over it. We were talking off air there. Um, the disappointment's always still there. Um, but definitely a bit more calmer today in reflection. I think naturally, in the aftermath, you know, you've got so much going in your head, so much to unpack, so much to discuss, and and you know, take away from the game. But uh, over the night and and this morning, kind of further reflection. You look at the bigger picture. Um, obviously, we'll, there's a lot to discuss in the show, and we'll go through the ins and outs of everything. But yeah, feeling a bit calmer today. John, you, you, you've already had the experience of writing an Optus article. You're getting this. I think you're doing Gig Pod later, so hopefully you'll be good by the end of the day as well. Yeah, no, I just need to get everything off my chest, and then I'll be fine. No, you, you know the thing is, it's it's difficult because like. Obviously, yesterday was a massive disappointment and you're not wanting to make excuses for the team or the manager or anyone at Celtic for, for, a, for a, a bad performance. At the same time, you don't want to go over the top and, and lose your head either because I think I think everyone realises, even the people who were critical of yesterday, I think everyone realises that you know the bigger picture is that everything still feels like it is on track and, and that Celtic aren't going to implode. Um, so everyone needs to keep that in mind as well. Hi, Ange, how are you doing? Um, yeah. As you alluded to there, you know the bond between the supporters and yourself and the team remains really strong, even in the wake of Sunday. But 
you know, as we get closer to the prize, I think there's a, there's a natural tension and excitement and supporters too. How do we all deal with it collectively over the next few weeks over what might be a bit of a crazy ride? Just just like you're beginning the ride on the scariest roller coaster you've ever been on. Though. So just, <laughs> just you know, um, hope that it all ends well, but enjoy the ride and, and the ups and downs. And you know, it's, like I said, it's part of the nature of sort of embracing this whole concept that we want to play our football a certain way, play, be a certain kind of team. And, um, you know, I think, you know, like I said, I don't think it's unhealthy for people to feel anxious or nervous or, you know, that's, that's why we love it. You know, if you, if I'm sure, you know, most people say, well, you know, if you could guarantee us, we win the next five games and, and, and we're champions, they, everyone would be happy, but you know what? I reckon they'd be a little bit bored as well, you know, and probably lose interest after a while. You know, the, the excitement of, of football and sport and, and supporting a team is that it is a little bit of that unknown, you know, that we are on the edge. And um, that's what, when you gain it and when you, and when you, uh, when you get the success that you deserve, you, you enjoy it so much more. We're back today. We're looking ahead to Ross County tomorrow and there's only five games to go. Another huge three points for Celtic on the road to the title. We now need a maximum of seven points to become champions again. It's probably six when you factor in the goal difference. It basically is six. We're getting there, guys. In the first half, I thought there was pretty good attacking combinations. I thought Jota and Kyogo looked back to their kind of combinations that we kind of saw in the first half of the season. Second half was just a, a bit more about defensive resilience. I thought Cameron Carter Vickers was had a had yeah. a good second half. I thought Greg Taylor had a good second half. You know, I, I think although it felt a little nervous for us supporters watching on, as it naturally would, I think if you look at the performance, you'll see that Celtic were pretty comfortable throughout and, and didn't really concede a lot of chances to Ross County. I, I know it was probably a little bit tighter than people would have liked. I know we missed a few t- chances, but... I think that's a, a good performance to get us on the way to you know this this end of season title charge. It's not one yet, I will admit that, but there is a high probability that Celtic will get the job done over our next couple of home matches against Rangers this weekend and Hearts the following weekend. Let's just remind ourselves of the situation in the Premiership with Celtic six points clear with 12 points to play for. Seven points from our final four matches will clinch the title. If we win on Sunday against Rangers, we'll need just one more point. Draw, and we'll need four more. Of course, our vastly superior goal difference would mean that victory on Sunday would effectively secure the league title. It's all intents and purposes. It would be done and dusted if we get the three points. Is it the day we celebrate? Is it going to happen? I'm convinced of it, you know, disappointing at Hamden a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, there was this you know, kind of drama and I'd say an overreaction at Hamden about, you know, Celtic get out-muscled, outplayed. I don't believe that for a second. We get narrowly, narrowly beaten in a 90-minute-plus a extra time uh, semi-final. Semi-finals are nervous by their nature. I think back here on Sunday, full house, all the momentum, I think it's going to be a good day. Hi everyone, how are we doing? Um, we're here at Babbity Bowster after Celtic won, Rangers won and there's two very different things going on here, Asim. There's the slight disappointment of how the game actually unfolded and there's the overall picture. So yeah. straight away, mate, get into it. How are you feeling? Hi everyone, um, exactly that. That's that's the emotions after the game. I think initially, a tinge of frustration and disappointment really at what could have been and, and how the game panned out. But when you look at the bigger picture at the start of the game, we had to avoid defeat there. They had to win. So we are coming away from it in a, in a much stronger position in terms of the title race. But naturally, just because of the way the game went, you just felt like that was a right good chance there yeah. at certain points. They all feel the same. They all feel they could have won. We, we feel we could have won. Um, but I, you just feel like it's a, a missed opportunity to really put a statement victory out there today. Do you think we're nervous at all today? And, and do you think that's only natural yes. when you consider where we're at? I, th- I, I thought so too. I don't think it was a nervy start, even though it might have looked like that the first time. I think it was just a scrappy start of the game. I think the last, like you said, I think when they equalised and then you could see them gaining a bit, they had nothing to lose. They had to go for it. So, yeah. and, and it might have been in the players' minds as well that, you know, 
just don't lose this. Yeah. But I did feel there was a nerves, and that also in the, the stands there was a nervousness. So that there was. Have, That's yeah. what I'm talking about. It was nervous the whole second half, and then there was just a moment, 91 minutes, 92 minutes, when it just flipped. changed into. Yeah. A, um, and so it's yeah. a weird. It's a weird thing, isn't it? It's really weird at the but moment. I, I I do agree that it is only natural. This is a, a new group of players. It's a new situation for a lot of them. It's not like your nine in a row team yeah. who have been there, done it, and you know they're season pros at seeing out a title race. So this was a, a big game still. It was still a, you know, you did not want to lose that game. So naturally that last 10, 15 minutes, like you said, the Joe Hart incident and just a couple of slack passes out the back. Thoughts on yesterday, John? How, what did you make of both the game and the overall picture afterwards? Yeah, it's, it's two things. You've got to split it, I think. Because I think if you go and say, oh, you were delighted by yesterday, you know, I don't think it tells the story of the game. And, you know, I was a sense of disappointment in, in the performance on the afternoon. And I say disappointment just because I felt it was a good opportunity. You know, I felt like there was a sense of expectation among supporters. Just felt like the chance to really grind it into Rangers this season. But, like, I've long maintained, and, and you, you know I have, that this season was never about dominating Rangers. And I, I don't think it was ever about being, you know, streaks ahead of them. And I don't think we are on, on the day. Like, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of nonsense in the aftermath about how, you know, from that side of the city, of course, about how they're actually the better team. Well, Celtic are obviously the better team, but I think when the two teams play, they're it's very tight. Um, and I think, it, you know, I think if you look at the overall record of, of the derbies this season, two wins apiece and a draw, I think that's probably a pretty fair, fair reflection. Yeah, I've got, I'm sorry. I know I was looking distracted there, but it's for a very, very good reason because there's a bit of breaking news at Celtic. I'm going to read this out. Um, Celtic Football Club is pleased to announce the appointment of Mark Lowell as head of first team scouting and recruitment. Mark joined Celtic from his position as head of City Football Group scouting mm-hmm. and recruitment within City Football Group's global structure, having spent the last 10 years there. Hi everyone, it's Friday, the sun is shining and Celtic can effectively win the league tomorrow. So cheer up. It's Celtic 4, Hearts 1. We are nine points clear at the top of the Premiership. Our nearest rivals only have three games to go, Stevie. They can only get level in points with us. Our goal difference is much better. The job is done. You can tell that from the reaction there from the players at full time. And I feel a little bit emotional. And it's not all about John Henderson coming on at half time. <laughs> Beat me to it there. That was uh, the, the highlight of the game was definitely seeing big John Henderson. Do you want to just spend the next 20 minutes chatting about darts? Yes, probably. <laughs> no, but it's not. I don't want anybody to turn the channel off even more just because I'm on and they see me. But that was fantastic today, and like Hamish, I'm just going to go on record and say uh, I was bursting into tears at certain bits of that game today, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I was emotional, and do you know what? That's what football's all about, though. The third goal was a big one. Aye, that, that, was, that was that was a moment like we're we're in WhatsApp groups. I'm sure people watching this are in similar groups, and that was the moment for me when that O'Reilly, O'Reilly goal goes in off the post because he hit the post just before that, wasn't it? Yeah, right, um, with, with right foot. With right foot, and when that third goal goes in. That's when you start thinking, you start yeah. allowing yourself, and I can't believe I'm actually saying it. I know we've been saying it on the channel for a while, but when it actually happens, it's a bit different. We're going to win this league. And we deserve, we totally deserve it. Yeah. And when that third goal went in, that was just celebrating that. Is that the that. moment for you? Yeah, celebrating that as wildly as well. Have what you, I, have you allowed changes. yourself to, you've obviously thought we're going to win the league, but have you allowed yourself to imagine that moment before it happened? I've allowed myself now to accept that I think we're going to be champions and... I don't care how we win it anymore. I don't care if we have to go to Tanadice and put in the hard work for it. Fine. Or tomorrow. But see tomorrow if Rangers do <laughs> drop points. Good. I really don't care how we win it. I just want it won now and I'll celebrate it madly. Yeah. And I really will. And today was just emotional as well. Really yeah. was. Like, I'm very glad that John, who I was sitting next to, didn't see me. But I did burst into tears at just after the huddle. Um, it was such an emotional moment, just for everything this season. Oh, the, the fans huddle? Aye, but it was yeah. more for the fact that we're going to be champions and it was just amazing to realise that. I think that's when I could accept it. Um, and I gave myself a wee moment before trying to get on with my hard man act again and act all cynical. We actually got a video of Stevie breaking down. Roll that now. I'm joking. We don't have that. You got you got worried for a oh. second, didn't you? Hi everyone. We're here today at the SEC Armadillo in Glasgow, where Celtic have arranged a press event with first team players Carol Starfield and Anthony Ralston ahead of the return of Celtic the Musical here at the Armadillo in September. Must be looking forward to tomorrow, Carol, and the chance to win the league. Yeah, of course. Uh... It's a, a big game. Uh, it's not uh, every day have the have the chance to to win the league. So uh, we will uh, 
yeah, it's a big moment for us, uh, and I hope uh, we can take the chance. It's, a, it's an opportunity for us all to go up and uh, to, to you know see over the line and uh, but do it the right way. You know, we want to go up there and we want to make a uh, we want to put on a good performance for the for the travelling fans and also uh, to really to really do it the right way and you know not just you know see over the line. Yeah. Well, what about that, everyone? Celtic are champions of Scotland again. No more chat about goal difference or, you know, almost being champions and might as well be champions. Official champions now, Asim. Hello, everyone. How are we all doing today? How are we feeling today? I'm feeling champion. Obviously, those scenes at Celtic Park just incredible. I mean, I saw someone tweeting that if that isn't going to convince the likes of Jota and Carter Vickers to stick around for next season, then I don't know what will. We're talking after midnight. Stevie was saying he was was going, and I was saying, right, fair enough. You'll maybe get, I don't know, 100 folk there at that time. I think the big party will be on Saturday. But there must have been thousands there at Celtic Park last night. If you were there last night... Let us know in the comments what it was like because it, it just looked absolutely incredible. We also get sent this footage from Stevie and also from Asim who were both there last night. So, uh, so take a wee look at this. Stevie also took this incredible, incredible photo. You'll have seen it going about. Various people have been posting it, I think, but Stevie took it. Just amazing. Just look at that. Perfect image of the night. Probably the best image I've seen of the night. It won't be the best image of the week, though, because we're going to see Ange Postacoglu with the Premiership Trophy in... Try to do my maths. 48 hours? Had, had very good season, very good players. The, the coach brought uh, good uh, Japanese what was I think crucial moment for for the season? Since since then then came to Celtic Park. I think that the football uh, the game Celtic changed completely. Uh, played better uh, technically, uh, scored many goals and creativity was better uh, on the game. And um, what what say? Uh, I'm absolutely happy then. On to my night last night, because I know you, you massively care about how I got on. As I say, I was in the home end, managed to get in, face mask on when I was going in so that I'm not recognised when you've got a face like this that's well known. It's very difficult. That's the pitfalls of being completely famous. But I got in, smile on my face, and enjoyed Celtic winning the league, albeit only with a draw at Tannadice. And after the game, when the celebrations got going, I took some pretty good footage. Stevie's still drunk, he's been drunk the whole week and uh, you were drunk here at Celtic Park the other night, weren't you? You had a, a fun night after we clinched the title. I did, brilliant. It was an amazing uh, crowd to welcome back the heroes for Dundee. 
Yeah. Uh, Celtic that is. No, uh, no me. No, no me. No, oh, not you. <laughs> but it was amazing. And, you know, the game, the final whistle from there on to the walk up to Celtic Park, seeing that crowd, seeing Ange come out, address all the fans, and the players looked to be loving it as well. It was amazing. And, you know, I was saying to you, Hamish, the scenes with the pyro and the fireworks, mm. it was like something, you know, it was like a team winning it abroad. Like, mm. It's the sort of scenes you see in Serie A and all that yeah. when they win leagues there. It was just amazing. What... What a brilliant night. It's a little bit calmer now, although there, there are still... I don't know why I keep turning around. There, there are still cans of tenants around there. I'm assuming that was you. I don't drink tenants, so it wasn't <laughs> me. Right, OK. We're recording here at Celtic Park. Can you believe they've actually let us inside Celtic Park and they've let been good in. enough to give us uh, about 10, 15 minutes to do a wee video? Stevie is absolutely buzzing because what just happened literally 30 seconds ago, Stevie? I just met my favourite player, Josep Juranovic. Josip Joranovic, I'm actually singing, can you believe that? He's so buzzing, honestly. He went and asked Josip for a photo, <coughs> um, and we'll put that on the screen now so people can see it. Um, sorry about the guy with Josip Joranovic there, but yeah, we're, we're obviously joyous. Um, we're absolutely delighted. Celtic have finished the league season. We won 6 0 today against Motherwell. We've just been chatting to Ange Postacoglu, been chatting to Callum McGregor, someone else, Yakimakis, as well. We'll bring you that tomorrow on the channel, and Celtic Park is. Now in clean-up mode, it's finished for the season. We're not going to play here, I think, for a couple of months, Stevie. You never know, you know, to what level someone's legacy, you know, will, will be seen by fans. But I think Nier Beaton and obviously Tom Rogic are two names that in 20, 30 years people will look back and go, they gave so yeah. much for the club and they, they, those were the glory days. Well, look what, I mean, genuinely, look what they've won. Yeah. That's it, it's, that's it. You just need to look at their honours. Look what they've been a part of, look what they've won, look what they've helped the club achieve. Enough said, really. And Neil Beato, what, what? I, met, I met Martin O'Neill as well, I just need to say that. Put it on screen. There we go, carry on, Stevie. And yeah, um, Neil Beato, I would be, I've got to be honest, there's been moments where he has been annoying for us through the years. But that's a big reason as well, we've had four managers keep him around at the club and see him as an important player to utilise within the squad. So yeah. overall, Neil Beato has been a big player for Celtic. Yeah. And I wish him all the best. I think that's the thing I want to just say is the smiles on people's faces today. Everyone was so happy. And when you, you, you this is a bit where I tear up because you can you can compare it to when Ange came to the club, the dark cloud that was over this football club. But it does seem like it's going to be Ange Poste Coglu. He's done it all himself when the club was in turmoil. And look what he gave us today. One of my best days ever supporting Celtic. The smiles on everyone's faces. It was an incredible, incredible day and just a bit like Tom Rogic, if Ange left tomorrow, he would still probably be my favourite Celtic manager ever. And I think we're, I think he's going to achieve even more in the future. I, I, I can't even put into words um, how much he means to me and what he's done. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do recency bias or that. It's got a way to go to become my favourite ever, perhaps. You're much older than me. I see you turned around there, well done. But I do genuinely love Ange. I mean, I haven't personally taken to a Celtic manager like this in my lifetime. Not since Martin O'Neill in 2000 when he first came. And again, yeah. we, were a, we were a mess. Uh, finished 21 points behind Rangers, as you remember. And then all of a sudden he said he's going to do everything he can to bring success back to Celtic. And he did. And I really hope Ange can eclipse that. But I absolutely love Ange. I love what he's done for us. I appreciate it so much. And he's just a very likeable guy. And... I can only see that sort of relationship continuing between the fans and him because I just can't see him changing. I think we just have to emphasise that, like what he's done. I just have to say it again. I mean, everybody came here uh, to Celtic Park today looking forward to it. The scenes that we saw today were like scenes I've, I've never seen on a trophy day before, um, with the possible exception of the Invincible season, but that was something very different. I think Angie's just given us so much and there's just far more to come. Follow the hoops, follow Ange, and most importantly, trust the process.